Welcome to the Strategy of the Week presentation, this week titled Protecting Profits with ATR. My name is Todd Schaefer, Manager of Research for VectorVest, and I'll be providing your strategy presentation this evening. ATR is an acronym that stands for Average True Range, a technical indicator, one that's included in the VectorVest software. ATR was developed by the famous technician Wells Wilder and is an indication or measurement of volatility. As the name implies, Wilder developed a volatility formula that is based on the range of the bar or the candlestick. But a volatility formula based only on the high-low range would fail to capture the volatility from gaps. So Wilder created Average True Range to capture this missing volatility. It's important to remember that ATR does not provide an indication of price direction, just volatility. It's measured in dollars and cents, so it doesn't translate directly from stock to stock, but it can be converted to a percentage or even expressed in terms of time. So if we're going to look at the average true range, we need to start off with the true range. Here we have a couple scenarios of price action that we might see in any particular graph. In example A, we see that the current high minus the previous close gives us the true range of the second bar because we're going to include this gapping action in the price movement. Conversely, um, downward price action will take the current low minus the previous close. Again, that allows us to include the gapping action. In example C, we now have an inside bar with no gapping action, so we take the current high minus the previous close. And our final example would be an engulfing bar or candlestick that was fully covering the previous day's action, and we simply take the current high minus the current low of the current bar. This results in an absolute value that are positive numbers because we don't care, we're not interested in measuring the direction of the price movement, we just want to know the breadth of the price movement. Wilder would use the greatest of those computed values for the value of the true range of that bar. To extend the concept of true range then to average true range, then as we look at several bars over time, we can simply take the average of that look back period, the number of bars we're including in our sample, and take the average value of that average true range. So at this point, let's bring up a stock graph. I've opened up a stock graph of CSR Limited. So here we're looking at price action of CSR over a three month time frame with daily data points or daily price bars. The range of any candlestick or price bar would be the range between the lowest price of the day and the highest price of the day. But as I described in the introduction, Wilder wanted to include any gapping action in that price action. So true range includes not only the range of price on that particular bar, but also any gapping action. So if we come to our parameter list, and I click Add a Parameter, and let's go to Technical Analysis, and we'll select Average True Range. We have a look back period for our technical indicator, and I'm going to turn this down to just one. So Average True Range, we're now looking at a one day or a one bar look back period. And let's put on the indicator and let's turn on a dateline. So here we can see that the average true range for this last price bar was 11 cents. This is actually in dollars and cents now. If however you find gapping action as we had back here, we'll notice the difference between the high price and the low price was about 14 cents. But our average true range was actually 17 and a half cents because we included the gap. So when we calculate the average true range, we come back to our look back period and say we selected a 10 period look back. Then the calculated value on whatever given day we select takes the last 10 days true range, adds them together and averages them. And so on average over the previous 10 days, there was a 10 cent range on average for this price movement. 
remember of course that this is now an absolute value so a hundred dollar stock will have a higher absolute value usually than would a lower dollar stock but this indicator helps me understand very quickly then though the normal the quote unquote normal volatility behavior of this stock based on the last 10 days so with a 10 percent or with a 10 cent price move that's about a three percent move on a daily basis you may find some volatile issues that move something more like a 15 or 20 percent volatility on an average daily basis and this helps you identify stocks that have more volatility say if you wanted to put a 10 percent trailing stop on that stock with a high volatility you might stop out the same day or within a couple hours of taking the position what this indicator helps us do then is understand the quote unquote normal volatility of price action the, tr the way technicians use it is twofold first of all we notice that when stocks are in this basing behavior typically the height of the candlesticks is relatively small Technicians will look for the rise in average true range as an indication that price is starting to move off of or out of that basing behavior, or conversely, out of a consolidation pattern. And so that uptick in volatility that comes with that upward price action can be a bullish sign. We also use it to calculate a trailing stop, which is the focus of our talk today, about using average true range as a self-adjusting trailing stop. And the concept is this. I put my date line back on and I took this position coming off of this low, maybe in this time frame. At the time I entered the position, the average true range was about five cents on a two and a half dollar share, about 2%. But as time goes by, we can see the volatility is increasing and as I hold on to that share, if I use the same stop criteria from the time I entered as the volatility was increasing, as I came to this area we were peaking in volatility, the average true range was up to about 11 cents a day. That daily average true range has now doubled. And while in the case of this stock, it's not appreciable in terms of percentage going from 2 to 3%, on a more volatile share, it could be a significant difference. An average true range stop loss then is a trailing stop loss technique that adjusts on a daily basis based on the change in the average true range, based on whatever look back period we select. So unlike a traditional trailing stop that has a fixed interval from the stock's high price, the average true range is self-adjusting, adjusting that range, widening as volatility increases, tightening as volatility decreases. It also allows me to unify my stop criteria even though I may have a lot of disparity within the shares that are within my portfolio. One final thought before we move into our demonstration. Average true range, as we said, is a computed value. That absolute value can be expressed as a percentage of the particular stock price. But because our average true range stop uses a multiple of this value, we can also think of it as an expression of time. In other words, if I did a three times ATR, then my calculated stop loss would be 0.339, which I can think of as about 10%, or three days of average price movement for the stock. Or stated another way, the stock could go against me three days in a row as long as that price movement was within or lower than the average true range for that look back period. Hopefully I'm helping you build an appreciation for just how versatile this indicator can be. So next I'd like to demonstrate the application of the average true range stop loss in the VectorVest program. So let's close our graph. And we're going to use our back tester, but let's first go to the market timing graph and set up our time frame. So I've gone to the graphs tab, open up a market timing graph. And for my test subject, I thought I'd just pick up the conversation uh, where we left off last week when my colleague Jerry D'Ambrosio talked about the bottom fishing searches working well off of these lows when the MTI gets to these oversold levels. In that demonstration, we used our RT kicker 
timing signal and use those first greens coming off the lows. So we'll begin our back test here on the first green light on 4th of July 2013 and run that through current. And he compared with a quick test the performance of the SMP ASX, the VST Mighty Mites, and the jailbreak searches. So let's move into the back tester. And the first thing I'm going to do is just a base run of each of the searches just to see how they did on this timing signal over that time frame. So we'll change our timing signal to the RT kicker. For our searches, I'll scroll down to the searches bottom fishing group. And for the first search, let's do jailbreak. Stop criteria, I'm going to put on a trailing 10% stop loss. And in the more settings, we'll do five positions. No replacements. Do not close any open position. Invest the average portfolio value. Odd lots. Do not repurchase anything I currently own. And we'll leave the rest of our defaults. For the automation rules down, we'll take no action to just let the stops control the trades. Next, we'll come down to set our dates. Starting in July of 2013 through last Monday when I did my research and we'll give this a name jailbreak AU dash T10 for a trailing 10% stop loss and we'll click finish and run. And so I'll simply copy that and change our search. The other two candidates, which were SMP ASX 200, all of our other settings will stay the same. We'll have to change our name. Finish and run. And finally, strike one more copy and change our search to VST Mighty Mites. Again, all settings will stay the same. We'll just change our name, finish, and run. And so we have our results. If we adjust the window here a little bit, maximize our graph area. We'll resort our results. Our best performer, as Jerry found, S&P ASX, which had a total gain of 23.62%, annualized at 30.27%, with a drawdown of 11.13. But one of the things that I look for in the equity curve is how much volatility in that equity curve, but also am I continuing to hit higher highs? When I compare that curve to the VST Mighty Mites curve, I have much better persistence of growth through this time frame, and I also have a lower drawdown. Comparing that to Jailbreak, Jailbreak has slightly lower performance at only a 13% gain, but I have a lot more volatility within the price action of Jailbreak than I did with VST Mighty Mites. So when I look at all three, even though I have a slightly lower return, I'm going to go with the VST Mighty Mites because I had better average overall performance. I also had almost a third the trading activity that I had with the S&P ASX search. Now let's consider our average true range stop then on this VST Mighty Mites back test. So we're going to strike another copy. And we'll come back into our automation rules for the up situation. And we're going to change our stop criteria to the trailing average true range stop. Here we can see this stop criteria will be met if the stock's price falls by the multiplied average true range amount from the highest price the stock has reached since the trailing ATR stop was implemented. So we have two things to consider. First of all, the period, the number of bars or the look back period for the calculation of the average true range. We default the settings at 10. Wilder published a setting of 14. But you can play around with this. Obviously, the more 
time you include, the greater the smoothing effect, but the less responsive it'll be. Conversely, the shorter the period, the more responsive, but the less smoothing effect. I like to think in weekly periods, so 5, 10, 15 days, so usually my sweet spots are a 10 or 15 period look back, but you can tweak this and find your own sweet spot. For the multiplier, then I can go by fractional days by clicking the single arrow, or I can go round number days by clicking the double arrow. So for this first pass now, I've put my settings here at a 15 day look back period. Multiplying that value times five is my new trailing stop value. And that will adjust every day based on the price action for the day. All my other settings stay the same. I come to the name description. I'm going to change my stop designation. I start with ATR and then in parentheses the look back period, comma, and then the multiplier. And I click finish and run. And I'm going to take several passes changing these components to try to find that sweet spot. Here we have our result. Let me group these by up search. So I have all my VST Mighty Might searches together. And we see our gain went from 15.10% up to 17.86. The same number of trades. My drawdown did go up three points though from 4 to 7%. So let's strike a copy of that. And we'll come back to our automation rules. And in stop criteria, I'm going to change my multiplier to 4. Again, change my name. Click finish and run. And in the interest of saving time here, let's do some time lapse photography. And I'll do a run also for the 3x. So here I've completed all the runs. We're looking at the 3x version of the ATR. And notice how performance really fell off in this particular study. Overall gain fell to 2.61%. So the sweet spot for us is here at the 4x, the 4 times ATR, where we improved our gain from 15% up to 21.45, annualized at 27.49, our drawdown right between the two previous runs at 6.41, and an equity curve that continues to build, although it is falling off a little bit in this current market mashup, but doesn't have a lot of volatility and tends to keep growing over time, with just a slight increase in trading activity. And so there you have it, a quick primer on the ATR technical indicator and its use as a stop loss force in the VectorVest program. If you want to recreate these results at home, of course, you would need to have the Auto Timer plugin module. That piece lets us select the timing signal that we'd like to use. If you don't have this functionality within your software, we do have a link in the views that you can try it out for a couple weeks and replicate some of our results here. We've also included in the views a link to a PDF, which will document the settings for you in the back test. That concludes our presentation for this evening. We appreciate you attending this strategy presentation. If you have any questions, please contact us in our product support department at our toll-free number or contact us by email at product support at vectorvest.com or come to the VectorVest University to see any of the other free tutorials that we do on a weekly basis. Again, thanks for attending.